In this video, we are going to take a look at a more creative way to use the brush tool inside of Lightroom and Photoshop's Camera Raw. All right, my name is Matt Kluskowski. Let's get to it here. I've got Lightroom open. The same tools as inside of Camera Raw would work exactly the same. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go grab the brush tool and I'm, I'm going to brush the typical way first. All right, I'm gonna brush the, the not creative way first, which can work for so many circumstances, but then I'm going to tail off into a different use for some of the tools here to help make this brushing work a little bit better. All right, so what I mean by that is I'm gonna take the brush tool and I want, I want to uh, I want to increase, you know, just bring out some shadow detail and a little bit, you know, make the bird a little bit brighter in this photo. And so that's pretty common. A lot of times we will use auto mask to do this, to just go in here and brighten the bird. And that would be the normal way to do this. So let's do that. And let's, let's we'll take a look at the result here. As long as I keep that crosshair in the middle, even though my brush is bigger, uh, as long as that crosshair stays in the middle, uh, we will get a good outline here. And of course you need, you need contrast to do this. There's no tool in the world that can do this without having uh, some degree of contrast between the foreground and the background. All right, so we just go through, do our brushing, hit the left bracket key, maybe make the brush a little bit smaller, give a couple of passes here. You can always press the letter O for overlay. And you could see if you missed any areas, I do that a lot as well. So it does a good job again, especially since we have a good amount of contrast, it does a good job of keeping within the boundaries of what we're painting. All right, so I'll see this a lot and I'll see, you know, and, and I use it a lot. I come in here where I want to, I want to be perfect. I want to keep this all within the boundaries. Also, I'll, I'll turn auto mask off once I get into the middle because you won't need it and it'll leave things looking a little bit, uh, a little bit splotchy in there as well. And then uh, hit the letter O for overlay. And now we can come in here and adjust it. I actually have some, um, you know, I, I use a lot of my own presets here. Dodge burn. I usually go dodge burn brighter overall. And then we can tweak some shadows. It's really dark in the dark area, so the shadows should should definitely help as well. Incidentally, if you ever wanted to check out my brush presets, you can. I'll throw the link up on the screen here. There are my own personal presets, but I do use them quite often. So as we adjust this, we can see that we're able to, to put some more light on the bird. And I actually think it works okay in this photo, all right? But let's switch gears to another photo where I wouldn't want to use the same concept. I wouldn't want to go over here to auto mask and, and try to go in here and that's going to be way too bright. So let's pull back on the exposure a bit, maybe even add some warmth to it. I wouldn't want to use auto mask to try to put a little bit more light onto this, this sidewalk here. All right. Wouldn't want to go and do this and, and perfectly make the sidewalk brighter everything else stays dark, right? And incidentally, this photo is by Julie Boyle. Uh, Julie had submitted this photo to one of my uh, one of my open submissions for me to edit photos. So I want to say thank you. It's a very cool photo. I love the just the overall mood and lighting of it. But to me, adding adding brushing in light in this way, it doesn't work. And it doesn't work because it it wouldn't behave this way. We don't just simply want the sidewalk to be brighter, where in this case, we wanted the bird to be brighter, all right? And it works to have the bird brighter in context of everything else in the photo. In this case, I think it starts to look fake as you just as you just go in here and basically paint the sidewalk, all right? You just basically paint the si sidewalk with exposure and some shadow enhancement. To me, it starts to look weird in that that's the only area. We don't have the play on light. As the light comes in through here, and we have this feathered light all over the place, we don't get that feeling with this walkway over here. So one of the ways that I help, I help kind of you know, combat that, I'm gonna increase that a little bit more though. A little bit more in the shadows, a little bit more on the exposure. One of the ways, little tricks that I help combat this is a reverse brushing technique. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll paint whatever it is I'm gonna paint. And, and I'll even let it, you know, I, I, I sometimes won't even use auto mask. I'll just go in here and just paint along. And if it spills over into some areas, it spills over. I don't necessarily need the time. And so I'll then switch over into erase mode. And you can hold down the option alt key if you wanted to, or just click on erase over here. It's gonna put me into erase mode. I would take the flow 
down here to about 60%, which in a way is, is just reducing the overall opacity or effectiveness of the brush. Uh, it'll just make me paint over multiple times um, to build up the effect. But in this case, we're erasing. I'm gonna crank my feather up way up to 100%. And I'm even gonna crank the size of the brush up just by hitting the right bracket key up as well. And what I'll do is if you look at that outer ring, the distance between the outer ring and the inner ring, that is the feather. And what I'll do is I will let that feather eat away at my foreground, all right? And it's gonna happen in a very subtle way. If you wanna watch it happen, you can press the letter O for overlay. So I'll just let the feather do the work, all right? I'm not gonna really put the middle part of the brush inside of there, because that's really gonna make a, a drastic transition. I'm just gonna let the feather on the outside, I might even move that flow up a little bit. And as I'm brushing here, it's also an important reminder, you know it's coming, the time to pay the bills. Gotta put the kids through college, in fact, I have one in college, and I'll tell you, it's expensive. Um, if you like this, this kind of work, this is the, the kind of work that I do in my no light, no problem courses. Um, where I don't concentrate necessarily on, on the tools and, and what the tools do. There are no tools out there in any program anywhere. Um, what I find when I, I teach seminars and workshops, it's, it's the implementation of the tools, how to use these tools, how to creatively see what's possible in the photo and then use the tools that we have to, to make that vision possible. So that is, uh, that's more of what I concentrate on in those courses. And I take photos where the light didn't necessarily cooperate and we're trying to enhance those photos. So if you absolutely hate painting light, you hate doing all those things, stay far away from it. But if you like that kind of stuff, I'll throw the link up on the screen and in the description. I hope you'll stop by to check it out. Okay, so the idea here as you look at this, this red overlay is if I let that feathered area kind of chip away into that area, you'll start to see a smoother transition and you can even make it more smooth by hitting the right bracket key make the brush even bigger right because now that feathered area really starts to chip away all right and then sometimes even brushing sometimes i'll just click but now we're getting almost in a way a natural a more natural fall off of light right light light would not contour to the edge of this sidewalk where the where the wall meets the ground it would not perfectly contour there all right it would not perfectly stop there it would feather off and this to me is one of the most powerful things that I do when I'm brushing. I hit the letter O for overlay to turn that off, but it creates that feathered light. You can now see more of a transition between, you know, some of these dark corners and some of the areas that we brighten there. And then we can come over here, of course, and we can always adjust that, maybe add a little bit of warmth to it because the photo overall just seems to have some warmth to it, maybe even a little bit of clarity for that ground there. But it just gives you a different effect. So if you ever are dodging and burning, which dodging and burning is a staple of photography, we didn't just start doing it with digital. This is, this is something that we've done for, for, for many, many years. If you're ever doing that, and sometimes it looks fake because you're just, you know, you're drawing a spotlight onto your subject, this could be a great technique to help that with. And in fact, I'd even probably go back to this photo and I would do the same thing. All right, and I often do the same thing with my wildlife photos. Even though I think it looks okay for me, I get more of a realistic look by going in here, taking that brush tool, hit the left bracket key, definitely make it a little bit smaller. Again, hit the letter O so you can, you can almost see it happening. And I will just paint along the edges. And I will let that, the feather of the brush chip away into the subject. And again, just create that natural contour of light so that it doesn't look like you're just shining a spotlight onto whatever subject that you happen to be dodging or burning with, but instead you're just letting that light contour a little bit more. And to me, it just gives a little bit more of a natural and a realistic look to it. And if you're an on one user, we can do something very similar. So I'm in the develop mode and on one, I'd head over here to my local corrections and uh, take the brush tool, make sure I'm set to paint in and then simply increase the exposure over here, maybe increase the shadows a bit, and I would paint. Now, On One does have an auto mask tool. It's this little uh, brush, the perfect brush up here with the little stars next to it. Um, it's, it works good in some circumstances. It, it doesn't, for me, it's not what I prefer for doing the edge detection. So 
in a case of this, if I'm using on one, I would actually overpaint it. I would overpaint it more than I needed to. I would let the brush, knowing, knowing that I'm going to follow this up in just a minute, I would overpaint, let the brush go on the outside, go paint the whole inside here and not worry about the edges like that. Uh, probably pull back a little bit on the exposure there. Then I would switch to paint out mode, which is essentially switching to eraser mode, hit the right bracket key, make my brush bigger. Again, I'm using a very feathered brush and I'd go in there and let that feathered edge do the work for me. All right. Hit the left bracket key. You can make it smaller and just go in there and let it chip away at the edge. Let it contour. Make sure you don't have any of that glow left. And then just work and chip away at some of those edges there. So you're getting the same, the same idea, the same technique of letting the feather do the work for you on the edges, still keeping the majority of the subject bright, but just giving a little bit more of that contoured light. If you were to turn the adjustment off and then on, you can definitely see it's still affecting it. And to me, again, just like Lightroom, it gives a more natural look to whatever you happen to be brushing on.